For a long time, interest in the armored anti-tank guided missile vehicles had declined in the western armies. Therefore, the Pars and Kaplan, the two new systems of the Turkish armed forces, have not become mediatic enough as much as new armored vehicles such as the Boxer, Ajax or Striker. However, it should not be forgotten that the devil is in the details. When these two vehicles are analyzed, it is possible to find important clues about the transformation of modern armies and how the battlefield of the future will be shaped. As the weapon detective, we're investigating what the Pars and Kaplan will tell us. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start. Although the Kaplan and Pars are apparently two separate vehicles, they are designed for a common need. Kaplan means tiger in Turkish, while Pars is the Turkish of leopard, and FNSS chose its name especially referring to the Anatolian leopard, which is a special subspecies. FNSS has previously produced an armored anti-tank guided missile vehicle called the ZTA for the Turkish armed forces. However, the Pars anti-tank and Kaplan anti-tank have very different design and mission definition than this vehicle. Before starting our analysis, let's examine these two systems and their stories. The most common misconception about the Pars anti-tank is that this system is a derivative of the Pars, which FNSS first exhibited at the IDEX 2005. This company defines all of its wheeled armored vehicles as Pars. Just as the Leopard 1 and Leopard 2 are two different tanks, these two vehicles are also different. Of course, many of the proven subsystems and concepts used in this first project were also preferred in the PARS anti-tank in order to increase reliability and reduce cost. Originally, the PARS 4x4 has been designed as a multi-role based platform vehicle to undertake special missions such as forward surveillance, anti-tank, and command and control. In the same period, the company started the development of the Kaplan tracked armored vehicle family for both domestic and international markets. This family includes three armored vehicles of the 10, 20 and 30 ton class as well as a medium tank. In those years, the Turkish armed forces initiated the weapon carrier vehicles project to supply two vehicles, one tracked and the other one wheeled. In 2016, the Pars 4x4 and Kaplan 10 were selected under this project by Turkey. The V-type hull of the Pars anti-tank, which is made of welded steel, provides high protection against mines. The survivability of the crew is also enhanced by the mine-resistant seats and automatic fire extinguishing systems. FNSS which has carried out important studies on mine protection since the first PARS project, has gained a well-deserved reputation worldwide in this field. Large and wide ballistic glasses on the front are designed to provide wide viewing angles for both the driver and the crew. This design facilitates target acquisition and identification, and it also improves situational awareness. In addition, there is a wide-angle day and night camera above the driver's position and at the rear. Thanks to these cameras, the vehicle can be driven in the night or thick fog without using blackout lights. There are baskets suitable for carrying provisions just behind the doors on the sides where the crew enters and exits the vehicle. Thus, the Pars anti-tank can carry a large amount of supplies such as food, water, fuel, and or spare parts and can be operated independently for a long time. Thanks to the center of gravity close to the ground, fully independent suspension system, ABS supported hydraulic disc brakes, central tire inflation system and low ground pressure, the vehicle can easily operate on any rough terrain. In order to reduce the operating cost, Many subsystems of the Pars anti-tank are designed to have the same life as the vehicle. The vehicle is equipped with a hydraulic recovery wrench. The fact that the power pack is behind the hull provides significant advantages to the Pars anti-tank. 
This design provides wide viewing angle for the crew and increases the maneuverability of the vehicle in muddy terrain. In addition, having the engine cooling and the air intake grills at the top of the hull helps the PARS anti-tank to have higher amphibious capacity compared to similar 4x4 systems. The PARS anti-tank's four-man crew consists of a commander, gunner, driver and loader. The combat weight of the vehicle is not officially announced yet. But it is known that the PARS 4x4 can be transported by the CH-47 heavy lift helicopter. So its weight has to be less than 10 tons, which is underslung capacity of Shinook. It is 5 meters long, 2.6 meters wide and 3.1 meters high. The vehicle can reach 110 km per hour. Its maximum road range is over 700 km. The PARS anti-tank is amphibious and can travel in the water with the speed of 6.5 km per hour. The hull of the Kaplan anti-tank is made using a ballistic welding technique. There is additional Togo-type armor on the access cover of the engine positioned in the front. Protection on the sides is increased by composite armor plates. Similar with the PARS anti-tank, in order to increase survivability of the crew, the Kaplan anti-tank is equipped with the mine-resistant seats and automatic fire extinguishing system. Also, the two fuel tanks, located at the rear, are fully armored and isolated from crew compartment. Thanks to the access hatch, the maintenance and repair of the power pack is carried out via inside. The advanced suspension track system of the Kaplan anti-tank reduces vibrations and improves road holding. The Kaplan anti-tank's five-man crew consists of a commander, gunner, driver, gunner's aide and additional personnel. It is 5.6 meters long, 3 meters wide and 3.1 meters high. The vehicle can reach 65 kilometers per hour. Its maximum road range is over 525 km. The Kaplan anti-tank is amphibious and can travel in the water with the speed of 6.3 km per hour. Both vehicles can operate with the CBRN environment. They are equipped with command and control information system, positioning navigation system, wireless crew intercom system and explosion and leak resistant fuel tanks as a standard. Thanks to their modular structures, the PARS anti-tank and Kaplan anti-tank will be able to quickly incorporate new technologies that may emerge in the future and can be reconfigured in a short time according to the different mission needs. In addition, this design allows vehicles to be easily equipped with additional armor plates and active defense systems when requested. The ARCT, the claws of these two wildcats, drives its name from the abbreviation Anti-Tank Remote Control Turret and was also developed by FNSS. It does not require a basket structure. Therefore, more interior space is available in the vehicle. The turret with two-axis stabilization allows the auxiliary 7.62mm machine gun to make highly accurate fire while the vehicle is on the move. Because it is equipped with an auxiliary power unit, ARCT can be used even when the engine of the vehicle is not running. Unlike its counterparts in the world, this turret can be modified easily to fire the OMPAS or Cornet E guided anti tank missiles. At this point, let's talk a little bit about these two guided anti tank missiles. The OMPAS was developed by Rocket Sun for the Turkish Armed Forces. It takes its name from Orta Menzili Tank Savar in Turkish, which means medium range anti tank. Thanks to the tandem warhead, it can also be effective against armored vehicles equipped with explosive reactive armor. The missile, which can establish a bi directional connection with the firing unit over the RF data link, can perform its final attack on its target in one of the direct or top hit modes. The on task can be used in fire and forget or fire and update mode. The hitting point on the target can also be updated during the flight. The maximum effective range of the missile, which has uncooled type imaging infrared seeker, is about 4000 meter. 
the Cornet E, which is a laser beam guidance system, has become known for its effectiveness against the world's best protected tanks, such as M1 Abrams and Merkava 4, especially in conflicts in the Middle East. At a range of 5,500 meters, the missile is able to penetrate 1,200 millimeters of steel armor after passing the explosive reactive armor thanks to its tandem warhead. Thanks to its laser beam guidance system, the Cornet E can also be used against helicopters flying at low altitudes and at low speeds. The missile systems and their siding systems on the Pars anti-tank and Kaplan anti-tank can be dismantled from the vehicle and used on tripod. This design provides important tactical flexibility. The Cornet E has been preferred by nearly 30 countries. Nowadays, NATO countries, including Turkey, often come face to face with these missiles in areas of conflict. The modular structure of the ARCT also allows the use of missiles captured from enemies. This provides a significant logistical advantage. In addition, this design makes a turret attractive for many Cornet E user countries. Perhaps the most striking feature of the Pars and Kaplan anti tanks is their superior amphibious capability compared to their counterparts. Both vehicles can enter the water without any preparation. Of course, many other modern armored anti tank guided missile vehicles have amphibious capability. However, while the Pars anti-tank and Kaplan anti-tank provide superior ballistic protection than their counterparts, they also have higher amphibious capability than them. After getting to know the Pars anti-tank and Kaplan anti-tank, let's look at what the capabilities of these vehicles tell us. Before moving on to this topic, it will be useful to know what the mission definitions of the armored anti-tank guided missile vehicles are. Since their first appearance, these vehicles have generally been regarded as tank destroyers carrying guided missiles. The use of guided anti-tank missiles against targets other than tanks had been rare for a long time. However, the use of Milan by the British for very different purposes during the Falklands War caused an important change in this perspective. The British soldiers, who did not encounter any Argentine tanks in this war, had fired many missiles. The Milan was used against machine gun nests and even snipers. After that, although guided anti-tank missiles are considered to be a multi-purpose weapon, armored anti-tank guided missile vehicles remain an organic part of armored units. After the end of the First Cold War, interest in these vehicles fell in the West. Because the Western armies were no longer under the threat of large armored units of the Warsaw Pact. The portable guided anti-tank missiles were more useful for soldiers who were assigned in low-intensity combat areas and organized in small units. Also, armor protection against the enemy with low firepower was not a priority. It was also sufficient to mount guided anti-tank missiles on tactical vehicles that were faster and cheaper than armored vehicles. Those with plenty of money, like the US Army, preferred helicopters and unmanned aerial vehicles to provide quick fire support with these missiles. However, in the new millennium, the infantry in Afghanistan and Iraq began to call air support even in the smallest combat. This brought intolerable burden for even the US economy. The characteristic of warfare has also changed over time. Especially in the Middle East, non-state actors unlike previous periods, are now fighting with vehicles that are heavily armed, have better armor protection, and have higher mobility. In addition, today, Western soldiers, who find armies of countries equipped with some modern weapons when they go to fight with a non-state actor, refrain from entering into combat because they do not have adequate equipment. Infantry on foot, carrying guided anti-tank missiles with them, are not quite able to deal with this type of threat. Their armored vehicles, like MRAPs, were designed for transportation, not to fight it. Their only option is to rely on the very expensive air support. However, this is not an economically sustainable way. 
modern Western armies require a new guided anti-tank missile carrier with high mobility, high tactical transportability, and sufficient ballistic protection. Yet, the vehicle has to be cheaper to acquire and operate than any type of aircraft. Also, when the Second Cold War is rising, they need armored anti-tank guided missile vehicles again. In this perspective, Turkey became one of the first Western countries to adapt to this new requirement. Facing with different types of combat on the same front, the Turkish armed forces turned to the most effective and cheapest solution with the Pars anti-tank and Kaplan anti-tank. It would not be surprising that in a short time these two vehicles make a name in the international market with their response to the new need, or that this trend would be followed by other Western armies in the near future. Thanks for watching our video, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.